All right, so the next type of factoring we want to look at is factoring cubic equations. So if I have a cubed plus b cubed, or a cubed subtract b cubed, it's going to be very similar to when we looked at what do we do if we have a squared minus b squared. It's similar because these two also have formulas we're going to follow. So the big thing with using these is knowing what the formula is, recognizing when to use it, and then being able to implement it. So let's start by looking at what the formula is. So when I look at a cubed plus b cubed, that is going to factor to be a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. a cubed minus b cubed is very similar, except essentially my first plus and minus flop. So it is going to be a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. Just like in my a squared minus b squared formula, the sign does not belong to the number here. I'm going to say that again. The sign does not belong to the number. It is built into my formula. If you're wondering how did these formulas come about, it's very similar to how the other formula we used came about. It actually comes from foiling or distributing the a into everything and then the b into everything and recognizing that every time we have this situation we do that distribution middle terms drop out and I'm left with a cubed plus b cubed. Same thing with when I distribute here. I'm not going to go through the proof in this video but it is a very basic one if you were to try the distributing and just um, and combining of like terms on your own you will see that this does indeed drop to be a cubed plus b cubed and this to a cubed minus b cubed. So those are my formulas. In terms of recognizing the formulas I need to know some perfect cubes. Just like in order to recognize my other formula, I need to know some perfect squares. So I'm going to list some perfect cubes for you. One cubed is one. Of course, one times itself is always going to be one, no matter how many times I do it. Two cubed. Two times two is four. Times two more is eight. Three cubed. Three times three is nine. Times three more is 27. Four cubed. Four times four is 16. Times four more is 64. Five cubed is 125 and 6 cubed is 216. Clearly I could make this list keep going on and on and on, but it shouldn't be necessary to know anything much larger than that. Now let's look at some examples. On example 1, the first thing I'm still going to ask myself, just like before, is do I have a GCF? There isn't anything that both 8 and 1 can be divided by, so the next thing I notice is, hey, 8 and 1 are both perfect squares. In fact, this expression can be rewritten as 2x cubed minus 1 cubed, telling me that this is in the form a cubed minus b cubed, where my a is equal to 2x and my b is equal to 1. So now as long as I know my formula, I can just plug the a, the 2x, and the b, the 1, into my formula. So here's the formula I'm going to use on this one, and I'm going to have a minus b times a squared. I do have to make sure and square both the 2 and the x, so 4x squared plus a times b plus b squared. And there's my factored form. Um, I usually should check. If I were to check and see if I could factor this, um, I can't. Um, I can't find anything that both multiplies to be 4 and adds um, to be positive 2. So for that reason, this one is done. That's my most factored form. Let's look at the second example. I do believe I have three, yep. On this example, so I first notice that should, uh, or I guess the first step is always gonna be to check for GCF. Um, I know 54 and 16 can both be divided by two, so I factor out a two, and I get 27x cubed plus eight. Well, again, I notice that this is in the form eight cubed plus b cubed, where my a, my 27x cubed, comes from having a, a, an a value of 3x. My b comes from having a b value, or my 8 comes from having a b value of 2. So now all I do is plug it into my formula. So now I'm going to use a cubed plus b cubed's formula, and I get a plus b times a squared, again remembering to square both the 3 and the x, 
minus a times b plus b squared. And again, if I were to check to see if I could factor that back quadratic any further, I realize I cannot find anything that multiplies to b36 and adds to b negative 6. If you wanted to try example 3, example 3 would be a good one for you to know to pause the video and try. All right, now that you've had a chance to try one, let's go over it. So I check for a GCF and I don't have one. I notice that this is in the form a cubed minus b cubed because this expression is the same thing as saying 3x cubed minus 1 cubed. Therefore, my a is 3x and my b is 1. From here, I follow my formula, which tells me to do a minus b times a squared, I square both the 3 and the x, plus a times b, 3x times 1, plus b squared. Again, if I were to check my quadratic, I know there isn't anything that multiplies to be 9 and adds to be 3, so that is my final factored product.